social disorganization theory. Um, so this morning I was trying to figure out what kind of a video I was going to make, or a uh, topic rather. I mean, I kind of have my have my format here. I smoke my pipe, I talk. So I was just trying to figure out a topic, and this came up. I think the best way to go about it is to first, we can imagine, we can think about what uh, organized social environment would look like. I think I hear a little woodpecker. Let's chill. Meryl looks kind of pissed off. Maybe that- oh, no, she's just looking at a fly. I thought maybe she was- <laughs> That woodpecker was pissing her off, but she's just swatting at a fly. Um, but, so, think about it. Uh, organized social environment, as in a city. <laughs> what you want is I think what I would want above almost anything is people that stay in a place for a long time. Good people that stay in a place for a long time. I think non-transience is the word I'm looking for. Now, unfortunately, uh, uh, with the cost of home ownership, which is a uh, big motivator in keeping you in one place for a long time, it's out of reach for a lot of people right now. There's even people that make enough money, but they're saddled with so much debt that they don't qualify for a mortgage. There's people, I'm sure there's a lot of people that are waiting on the sidelines, waiting for interest rates to come down, waiting for prices, actual house prices to come down. So, there's a bill, and I don't think it's gone anywhere, but it was talking about uh, banning corporate entities from buying single-family homes. Uh, I don't know. I really don't know um, enough about all this to really speak on it, but I do know that I would like my neighbors to be my neighbors for a long time. If they're good people, you know, if you get bad neighbors and they're locked into a 30-year mortgage and they're stuck with them, that's not very pleasant. But... That's one thing. So... 
Yeah, having neighbors that stay for a long time. I lived in the type of na- I grew up in the type of neighborhood where if you, for the most part, if you could leave that neighborhood, you would, so a lot of my parents around, uh, sorry, a lot of my friends' parents, uh, friends' families around the time of going into high school started making enough money to where they just uh, wanted to move to a nicer neighborhood. And that creates destability, instability, sorry. It, it destabilizes the neighborhood. It's not as easy to make friends when you're not like a little kid. Because when you're a little kid, you can just like go. Like I've had friends where we literally made friends with them by just like knocking on the door, inviting them out to hang out. Like we would say play, which sounds kind of awkward when you're in high school. So they're just, it, even 7th, 8th grade, it's pretty, and like it's not, it's so intimidating to do that when you're a kid, but we were all like in a big group, we all like knocked on the door, you know, welcome to the neighborhood type of deal. So it's funny, little kids are good at, uh, uh, bringing people together. They may be the best. Um, you know, that's something else I could throw in there. Not a lot of people are having kids nowadays, so... Um, you miss out on that advantage. There's, like, little kids, there's not, um... Not as many boundaries with them. They can just walk up to a stranger, you know. They're not scared to do it. And 90% of the time, 99% of the time, the stranger is happy to see them. And way more forgiving because it's a child. Um... So, uh, something this theory talks about also is with adolescents in neighborhoods that aren't, are, uh, disadvantaged in terms of economics, they end up, <coughs> they end up looking up to, uh, crime more and... I think the reason that is, is because if there's not a lot of job opportunity, like sure you'll see some kids that go by the books and find success, but uh, the overwhelming majority, it's going to be like the dudes that have money are going to be the guys that are into crime. if. If there's no, like, good-paying jobs, that's just how it's gonna play out. And so... <clears throat> uh, they... they look up to that. They admire that. Uh, but... Again, what does an organized social environment look like uh i think you need a good relationship between uh the people and the authority figures like they both need to love each other need 
access to good food, healthy food. Like, if I'm not eating well, I'm just gonna be a shitbag. Like, there's no other way around it. Gotta, gotta have a good diet if I'm not eating well. Like, even now, like, usually I can get away with it in the morning. But if I don't have a good meal by... Whoa, whoa, whoa. Sorry, Meryl's falling off and... Did you break a nail, Meryl? Uh, but yeah, if I don't have like a good meal by lunchtime, like even now, I feel as though I'm not on it as much as I usually am. right now because all I've eaten today is I, is I ate like a couple muffins and after this I'm gonna have to go in and uh, make something a little more uh, nourishing um, but there's neighborhoods that all you have in walking distance is a uh, gas station you know or like a dollar store there's i used to work at a dollar tree there's no there's not really any healthy food there most of it's like corn syrup shit so healthy food accessibility um my neighborhood growing up, we had a lot of fruit trees, which was awesome, like cherry, apple, we even had berry bushes growing around, pears, pear trees, and uh, that really helps too, so if you can grow food in your neighborhood that would help with that as well and yeah you just need a, a, a legit grocery store like I think that's really important too Um, leisure time. If both parents are working all the time, or even if, like, they just, one of them just abandons their kids, kids aren't going to get attention. What do kids do when they don't get attention? They get into, into trouble for the most part. And uh, if all you have is low paying jobs, and you have to work uh, three jobs to get by, there's not, not enough time for your kids, not a time, enough time for your children. So that's a, that's a big problem too. Uh, sports leagues, typically they're funded by, uh, donations if no one has money to donate or sponsor these sports leagues, they're just not going to be available and those are really important for, uh, keeping kids out of trouble too, so... And, and then, like, all anyone ever really wants to talk about when it comes to these things is, like, uh, like, pop culture, like, oh, this rap music is, and I'm sure it doesn't help, like, but I don't think that's the biggest factor at all, by far.
And you could even argue, like, would rap music and the, like, the type of rap music that's violent and, uh, puts crime on a pedestal, would it even be popular if people didn't relate to it? Hold on, guys. I'm gonna get my cat out of get out of there, Meryl. I don't want you ruining my compost. So something I forgot to talk about, guys, in the video before this one, or video before the last one, is I think I made composting a little, and it's simple, but like I made it a little too simple. Uh, I didn't mention you don't want uh, animals that eat meat. You don't want their their uh, their shit and piss in your compost. Um, you just don't want that. You don't want dairy or meat in your compost. And. Uh, yeah, you want about half nitrogen, half carbon, uh, and a third water, I think, is the ideal mixture. Although, that doesn't matter as much as, uh, you just don't want, like, carnivorous animals, even omnivores. If they eat meat, you just don't want that in your compost, so... Uh, watch out for that. I think I don't think Meryl was trying to take a dump in my <laughs> uh, pot, but uh, I think she's just chasing this fly. But anyways, that's what to me looks like an organized uh, social environment. So social disorganized theory. It goes into, you know, a lot of the stuff I talked about already, um, you know, uh, is the economy okay? Are people staying in the neighborhood for a long time? Are the kids getting enough attention? And if none of those are true, you're going to have higher crime, a uh, higher amount of people uh, with mental issues, higher amount of suicide, drug use. But it's, uh, it's basically like, you know, it's, it occur like, if you put anyone in that environment, that's just what happens. It's not about your race or your characteristics, it's just the environment you grow up in, and uh, that's what the theory's about. And it's a theory, but to me it makes factual sense. Um... Another thing I might add is a place for, uh, I talked about this a bit in the last video, third place is a place for the community to meet and spend time together. 
This could be a church. This could be... Parks. Could even be like a game shop, like uh, somewhere people go to play like board games and such. Libraries. And, uh, Yeah, so that's that's about all I can really think about right now. Again, I just heard the term. Heard about the term this morning. Um, so, but, but a lot of the, the issues with it I have heard about. And uh, oh, the last thing I'll say is, unless I think of something else, but the last thing I'll say is, uh, it's uh, it's a great thing when someone makes it out of these types of environments and then gives back to them and that's really awesome. I think for the most part, people abandon them when they can, like when they can get out. Oh, I'm gonna move to a organized social environment. I wanna live here. I wanna raise my kids here. And they just leave, you know, where they grew up in the dust. And that's what keeps these places in the cycle of I think the root cause of it is uh, uh, economic opportunity. Because even when I talk about these third places, like a game shop can't exist without um, revenue. Even a park or a library, uh, they're tax-based if there's not enough taxes to create them or maintain them, they're not going to be there. Uh, churches, that's something where, like, okay, you can make a church in a bad community if you have, like, a large church organization and you have enough money and and even if you're not getting donations from a bad neighbor, like, I don't want to say bad neighborhood, but uh, a neighborhood with not a lot of economic opportunity. Uh, you're going, you, I don't know. There's not going to be as much incentive for church, and then uh, religion is falling off anyways. I've heard it's having a bit of a comeback, but... you know it can't just be churches like it has to be i think it has to be a combination of everything because not everyone's want, gonna want to go to church um so we'll see what happens i i personally believe that as we get past a uh uh post-labor uh, society and the value of human labor goes down. There's going to be, you know, probably a point that's pretty bad. And then when it gets really bad, I don't know if people are going to have to revolt to get this done, but it's eventually going to lead to either a universal basic income or uh, universal basic services where all your needs are met 
And then you might see um, these communities actually improve and you'll have more of a balance like you might even see like communities that are very uh economically prosperous take a downfall um because if you go from being someone that like works in an office and you make like 80k a year and then you go from that you know you're able to take vacations or i don't know if 80k is really all that much anymore nowadays but i don't know say you make above average whatever that is and you can take vacations and you can buy luxury goods and you go from that to just having your needs met i think you'll see those places kind of fall down a peg <clears throat> Maybe you'll see people leave those places and return to wherever their hometowns were. Maybe they'll go out to the country. Uh, maybe they'll go back to, like, an urban environment that is cheaper to live in. But you, maybe what you see is, like, these, uh, like, desperate places move up and become more livable um that's that's about it guys thanks for tuning in and i'll see you next video um thank you